In this video, I am going to discuss a controversial research study that was recently published which found that unvaccinated drivers were more likely to be involved in a traffic accident than vaccinated drivers. I am Dr. John Padfield. I am not a medical doctor, but I do have a PhD in technology leadership and innovation. In my 2013 doctoral dissertation, was entitled, A Study of Innovation Processes in the United States Healthcare System. I also teach graduate courses in statistics and data analytics, and I have served as a major professor for doctoral students' dissertation committees. I am sharing this to establish my credentials as someone who knows how to design, conduct, and analyze research studies. This week, a study conducted by Canadian researchers made headlines across America. One MSN headline read, Neglect, Unvaccinated People More Likely to Have Serious Driving Accidents. Another MSN headline read, Unvaccinated Drivers Could Pay More for Insurance As Study Finds Higher Crash Risk. Fortune's headline read, People who skip their COVID vaccine are at higher risk of traffic accidents, according to a new study. To say I was skeptical about these headlines is an understatement. However, I have learned to never react to what the media says about a study. The media frequently dumbs down nuanced findings from a study, or sometimes they simply misreport what the conclusions of the study were. Before accepting or rejecting the media's claim about the study's finding, I downloaded and read the 15-page study published in the American Journal of Medicine. The first thing that I look at when evaluating any study is who are the authors and do they have any self-reported conflicts of interest. The researchers involved in this study had impressive degrees and affiliations with universities in Toronto, Canada. None of them reported any financial or personal affiliations that might influence the study. My initial evaluation was, so far, so good. I then looked at the methodology of the study. The researchers designed a longitudinal study, which means that they tracked individuals for a period of time. The period of time in this study was one month. The researchers obtained access to the electronic medical records of 11,270,763 individuals aged 18 or over who lived in Ontario, Canada and determined that 84% of those 11 million people had been vaccinated and 16% had not been vaccinated. The researchers then monitored 178 hospitals and medical centers across Ontario for a month, and they linked treatment for 6,682 traffic accidents back to the 11,270,000 individuals who they knew to either be vaccinated or unvaccinated. If vaccination status did not make any difference in the likelihood of having an accident, then we should expect unvaccinated people who made up 16% of the population to be involved in 16% of the accidents, or approximately that number. And likewise, we would expect 84% of the people who were vaccinated to be involved in 84% of the accidents. But that is not what the data showed. 1,682 of the 6,682 accidents, or 24.4% of the accidents, involved unvaccinated people. This means that the unvaccinated people represented a disproportionate number of those that were injured in traffic accidents. The difference between the expected 16% and the observed 24.4% was attributed to vaccine hesitancy and in the discussion of results, the researchers stated, quote, COVID vaccine hesitancy was associated with significant increased traffic risk. The researchers acknowledge, quote, a limitation of our study is that correlation does not mean causality because our data do not explore potential causes of vaccine hesitancy or risky driving. The researchers then speculate about potential causes of the correlation with statements such as, quote, one possibility relates to distrust of government or belief in freedom that contributes to both vaccine preferences and increased traffic risk. The researchers also suggested a different explanation for why unvaccinated people have more accidents might be misconception of everyday risk, faith in natural protection, antipathy toward regulation, chronic poverty, exposure to misinformation, insufficient resources, political identity, limited health literacy, or social networks that lead to misgivings around public health guidelines. 
To paraphrase, the researchers are suggesting the unvaccinated people in the study are uneducated, anti-government, or acting from political motives. I would like to suggest an alternative explanation for the results observed in this study. I do not disagree at all with the findings that unvaccinated people were involved in a disproportionate number of traffic accidents in the summer of 2021. The methodology used in this study is sound. However, before I share my alternative explanation for the observations, I need to share two graphs with you that I created in 2017 when I wrote an article about an increase in traffic fatalities in the United States. In 2017, a major news outlet was running a doom and gloom, scary article about the rapid increase in traffic fatalities in the United States. I decided to dig into the actual data for myself and see if there was really a spike in traffic fatalities. I went to the National Transportation Safety Administration's website and I downloaded the data on traffic fatalities in the United States by year since the United States government began keeping records in 1921. So were traffic fatalities really increasing? Well, it depends on how you look at it. If you just look at the number of deaths from motor vehicle accidents, the answer is yes. The data shows the total number of traffic deaths per year hit a peak of around 55,000 per year in the early 1970s and generally fell to about 33,000 per year around the year 2010. However, there was an observable increase in the data in 2015. The data on this chart is 100% true, but it is also misleading. This chart spans 95 years, from 1921 to 2015. Over that time period, the population of the United States grew by almost 300%, and the total number of vehicle miles driven increased 5,600%, from 55 billion per year to over 3 trillion miles per year. If you look at vehicle fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled, you get a very different picture. Vehicle fatalities decrease by a whopping 95% over the course of the past 95 years. So what does this have to do with unvaccinated drivers being involved in more traffic accidents than vaccinated drivers in Ontario in the summer of 2021? The study which found the 16% of the population who were unvaccinated were involved in 25% of the vehicle accidents. That study did not take into account the number of miles driven. They acknowledged this as a limitation in the study when they stated, quote, another limitation of our study is the lack of direct data on driving exposure in different groups. This lack of data is a serious limitation in this study. It is possible, and in my opinion likely, that many of the unvaccinated people were less worried about COVID-19 and were traveling more, while those who were more concerned about COVID-19 were vaccinated and staying home rather than traveling. I cannot speak to the conditions in Ontario during the summer of 2021, but I personally know many higher risk people who were vaccinated and boosted who stayed close to home for much of 2021. Can I say absolutely this is why more unvaccinated people were involved in traffic accidents? Absolutely not. I am simply offering an alternative explanation for the observed data rather than suggesting unvaccinated people are uneducated, anti-government, or politically motivated. I would be interested in seeing a multi-year study of traffic accidents in Ontario to see how much the traffic accidents dropped during the pandemic. I know here in the United States, the Federal Highway Administration stated that Americans drove fewer miles in 2020 than they had in the previous two decades. I am sure that number came back up some in 2021 as more states opened back up, but as of the summer of 2021, I suspect the miles driven and likely the number of accidents were still down due to many people, especially those most concerned about COVID stayed home. Thank you for watching.